and welcome back to the Girl, Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast, where we have phenomenal ladies and gents that teach us how and why our brands are a big deal in this episode's no different. We are here with the phenomenal, she doesn't even need an introduction, Ari Squires. <laughs> she is a speaker agent. She's an author. She's a speaker, a best-selling author, a business seller. Yeah, I've been watching on Facebook. She is just super phenomenal. A world traveler. She just got in from Tulum. You know, she's a fancy lady and she's a business builder. And she has this brand about this silent money that we're going to talk about as well, because we need some silent money. OK, and I'm just super excited and pumped about this conversation. Well, thank Ari, you. thank you so much for being here. Of course. Anything for you, Shadow. Anything. Thank <laughs> you. I got a lot of stuff to talk about with Ari Squires. I don't got my notes. I was like, I don't need my notes for this. Tell us a little bit more about who you are. Oh, goodness, who I am. You summed it up pretty well. I love to travel, <laughs> but primarily, if we're talking to business owners here, I love helping people really just create the businesses that they absolutely love, but make a lot of money doing it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of money doing it, but you talked about silent money. And I really still believe that offline money, which is silent money, still works. The old way of doing business still works. I know we're in the age of internet. You guys are probably watching this on YouTube or listening to it on, on audio, but the old way of business is still extremely lucrative. So I like to still teach those skills and those principles so people can build their brand value online and offline and get those bigger checks offline. Let's talk about it. Let's dig right into this, <laughs> this offline, because let me tell you, the Internet is ghetto. So let's talk about <laughs> the, the silent money. What does that actually mean? And how some entrepreneurs, especially in this new year, are looking to diversify. I'm one of those people looking to diversify to take some of my online skills that I've acquired offline. So what are some of those things that maybe the online entrepreneurs need to be paying attention to as we want to do more business offline? Well, it just really starts with relationships and your mm -hmm. network. And so I feel like online is great because we can't, I think I met you online probably. You can't establish great relationships online, but me and you have yet to make money together. Mm. Honest, right? Mm. So if I look at the relationships that I have that are in my network that are completely offline that I've met from masterminds, being in the right rooms, being invited to investment meetings and being in the right rooms and building those relations, you'll find out that a lot of people have businesses, business acquisitions, a whole bunch of stuff going on that we don't, that's not shared online. A lot of the big money deals that are happening, depending on what you consider a big money deal, I consider big money deals, businesses selling, I just sold my business, you know, lots of it, it, groups come together to invest in um, real estate and other businesses. People aren't talking about this online. So that's what I mean by silent money. It's that money that you're making and no one's aware of it. No one's clear. No one, you don't have to promote it. You don't have to share it. You don't have to, you know, say anything about it. And another way to make silent money too, is if you do have an online business, if you create a, an in-house referral system within your business, mm. that's silent money too. Referrals, doing money, taking your business and making more money offline. How did you, you talked about getting relationships and getting into these different rooms. Mm -hmm. What's been one of your strategies to get into these higher level rooms? Ooh, I don't know if I have a strategy. I think if I did have a strategy, I would say I'm be I'm more intentional. Mm. And intention, I think, is a strategy, right? Mm. Because you don't say yes to everything. For me to get into the right rooms, every room is not a right room. Mm. So you hear, oh, come to this conference friends come to this place so that you can be around like minds. I don't always want to be around people who are like minds. I want to be around greater minds, Ooh. bigger minds, people are, that are taking way bigger risks than me, people that have way more money than me, people that have way more experience than me. Those are the rooms that I want to be in. Not like, I don't want people in the, in the same space because I feel like I can't learn. Mm. Even though sometimes we can, mm. but when I'm around those bigger rooms, I feel like I'm expanding and my network is, is expanding. So I'm intentional about what I say yes to. So I'm not in mm. every space following the crowd where everybody else is. I like to be where, you know, don't want no one's really know about. <laughs> I think that's one of your like secret weapons or maybe it's not a secret. <laughs> but when I'm watching you online, you don't say much. But when you say something, 
it packs a punch. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that's important. And, and I do say a lot online. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bashing online mm-hmm. marketing. We have to be well positioned online. We have to be. Because even when you go to these places and you meet these people, the first thing they're going to do is Google you. Mm-hmm. Shade Adu, who is she? Mm-hmm. So your online presence has to be very high value extremely high value when your name comes up on google who is it attached to you get what i'm saying like these things are so important so i don't know if i answered your question or not what (laughs) mistakes are people because you talk about brand equity and we talk we're on the girl your brand's a big deal podcast what are some things that people are doing well when it comes to building their brand credibility and brand equity in the marketplace i think who you attach your name to Mm. and i talk about that a lot in my book called become a high value brand and why you should like you okay like online you'll see and i talk about this in my book you'll see someone say hey i have an opportunity to be in my book put me in the comments if you're Mm -hmm. interested and sometimes people don't even know who else is attached to that book. Mm. It can be some shady folks, some scammers, some mm. you never know about these other brands that you're attaching your name to, but you just want an opportunity. So I believe in being way more intentional. So I see I think that's a mistake by putting your attaching your brand to any and everything. I think that's a big mistake because it lowers your brand value. So, so that's why I'm here. You have a very high brand. So I would attach my brand to another high value brand. You get what I'm saying? I feel very special. Yes, absolutely, Shadi. So you the bomb girl. That brand <laughs> equity and brand value and attachment. I th- uh, you've been talking about that brand attachment. It's so crucial. It's so crucial. It's something that we have to take very seriously. What are some of the mistakes that people are making? What are we getting right is being selective. Mm-hmm. But what are what are some of these other mistakes that you're seeing? Oh, gosh. Um, mm, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but I'm looking at it from from. So I'm a speaker agent. I just, mm-hmm. Something that I just branched that I just branched. Yes. A management agency. And so booking speakers, I think a mistake that some speakers, and I'm speaking, talking to speakers here, who are entrepreneurs are making, is paying to speak on stages mm. where I know that the only way to get on that stage is to pay. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, don't get me wrong, because what I'm saying here is not in every instance. There's always mm-hmm. room <laughs> for other things to take place. Because I have seen a couple brands who have paid to play on stage blow up and do extremely well. But that doesn't happen often. Those are very rare cases. <laughs> it's very rare cases. So that's a mistake that I see because what that does is it lowers that brand equity. Mm. It lowers that brand equity because if I see you on stage being promoted for this event that you paid to speak at, it doesn't make you as credible if you were paid to speak mm. at that event. Mm. Right. Let's talk a little bit about let's segue into that. The speaker piece. Because I know we have coaches and experts who want to speak. And I know this is a new venture for you. And why did you decide to open up a speaker agency and represent speakers? Because I want more of us. (laughs) It it is going to be the number one um, speaker agency for speakers of color. We're not getting paid. To speak. Mm. We're speaking mm. for exposure. We're speaking. We're paying to play, which is fine. But we deserve to be paid. We deserve to get five thousand dollars to twenty five thousand dollars. All expenses paid. We deserve that. And I don't see it enough. So what happened in this space for me was just simply one of my clients. She wanted to speak at a very prominent event. And they said, oh, well, we don't have a budget. And she was upset because she's been she's had a heart set on that. And we literally strategized to position her to get her there. They said they didn't have a budget. I said, let me call them. <laughs> Just give me the phone number. Let me contact who you contact. And I'm such a great negotiator. Like, I love negotiating. I love doing deals. As you mentioned, I used to be a business broker at one time, very long time ago. And so I just like doing deals and negotiating, having conversations about making win-win-win situations. And so I was able to get her paid, fully paid for that event. And so then I said, well, let me see how many of my other clients want to speak and if I can get them booked to speak, paid to speak, paid to speak, because there's a difference between booked and paid. So I want to get them paid to speak. And so I did it for 18 months. And so I said, well, let me go ahead and launch this arm and bring on more dynamic speakers who are dope, who have already been speaking, who have already been speaking, and I can get them on more stages. So that's how how it happened. So it is new, but I'm loving it so far. I love it so far. I love it it because... I know you're a negotiator. So yes. this happened. I don't know if you even remember this. 
I have, I have several Ari stories. Mm. One of them, we were at a mastermind in LA and I was, we were masterminding around a table talking about problems and challenges in our business. And I remember me talking about asking for the sale or I thought I was, I had a client, but I really didn't have a client. And then Ari said, you didn't have that client because they didn't pay you. This is what you needed to do instead. So this is just like, it just oozes through you. It's just so like, this is what you do. How did you become that person? Because I see it in you so, in so many different ways. Just saying, oh, I'm going to negotiate this contract for a speaker. I'm just going to do it. Oh, I'm going to sell this business. Oh, I'm going to do this. And then I also see other people modeling what you do too in the marketplace. Like, how can we just, what's the, the secret weapon to being you? Mm, there is no secret weapon. Mm. You just got to show up. And you just got to show up. Yeah. You know, you just stay in your lane. And I like creating mm. my own lane. <laughs> I do like creating my own lane. I do like to see what everybody's doing and do the opposite. That's why I say. She I goes go, the different way. I do. I, I call it, go, my mama called it going against the grain. She said, you always want to go against the grain. I was like, I know. That's just how I am. Because I've read from successful people in books that those that stand out and, and carve their own lane, those are the ones that are most successful. And I've seen that even in my experience with my mentors and even in my in my business. When I'm, when I'm set aside, it, you stand out. And so I think that's just who I am naturally. You go against the grain. And I just, I'm like, I like how she moves. It's just fascinating. You know, I don't always say, I'm like, I just like how you move. Thank you. You know, I look at women in the, in the marketplace. I got another Ari story. I got a couple. <laughs> One, and you happen to have a ponytail today. You had a ponytail. You had I a love my ponytail child. You <laughs> had a brunch <laughs> in DC. I, oh my goodness, I got stories all over the place. Yes. And I was like, she has a ponytail, and I want a ponytail. Do you know it <laughs> took me years to get a ponytail? I didn't have a ponytail till last month, really? December 2023, <laughs> and you had that ponytail probably. 2019. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to get a ponytail. And I finally did it last did month. You, did you rock it? I rocked it for a day. I kind of messed it up, but I rocked it. We're going to do it again. We're going to get another ponytail this year. I was like, I already had a ponytail shot. They got to get a ponytail. It took me some time. And then I love just, you are a masterful negotiator. I remember another story. Listen, I'll be paying attention. I got my story. I told you I didn't need a script. <laughs> I remember because we, we both host events and now you're hosting international events. I'm working on hosting international events as well as part of my vision. And I remember you hosted an event in Las Vegas. I wanted to come. I think something happened that weekend. And you talked about negotiating with the hotel. Now, what you don't know is, and it was like a like the negotiation number you said. I said, wait a minute. And I showed proof. I don't she talk. showed it. Contract and email. I was like <laughs> flabbergasted because I think probably a year or two prior to that, I'd hosted this event and I signed this contract for twenty thousand dollars. No one I didn't have the money. And it was in 90 days. Listen, only God got me through that moment. And then to see you talk about negotiation, I didn't even negotiate. It was like a privilege. I was just honored that they gave me the contract versus being like, oh no, let's negotiate. Let's see what I can get. I'm bringing value, high value brand to the table. Why are we, why am I not negotiating? And I will, I promise you, ever since you made that post, this is why I'm so going about it differently. Now, oh, right? <laughs> oh, oh, let me tell you. We don't play the reindeer games with, yes. with hotel contracts. And we don't play. And if I can say that goes with everything, and that's why I say you got to do business the way business is supposed to be done. Mm. Before you go into anything, you have to know what, even a client, you have to know how are they going to win? How would they, how are they going to benefit from this partnership? Cause that's mm. what it is. I'm not, they, that hotel needed you. Just as much as you need them. So we have to make this work for both of us. I'm not trying to pay $25,000 as an mm, entrepreneur. Mm. I'm trying to keep my expenses low so I can have more profit. So I knew that that was crazy because I know how the hotels win. I know how they make their money. They make money off of people being in their space. So I was going to bring the people. I just had to let them know that. And I was like, wait a minute, there's a new way to do this. <laughs> yeah. And I promise we've been doing it different ever yeah, since. Awesome. So I, I just want to say thank you for posting and just planting these seeds. And, and I watch a lot of people online, but I definitely pay attention to what Ari Squires is saying. If she's saying we need solid money, I'm like, okay, it's in the, it might not manifest today, but I'm paying attention. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's just the testament to who you are as a thought leader in the marketplace. You. you just move differently and it's just so powerful. So, okay, now then you added this new loophole. You just threw it in there this week <laughs> about selling your business. Yeah. 
And that was my silent business. I've never, the, let me tell y'all how I promote the business without promoting it, right? Mm. <laughs> so I have, I had, I still do kind of, because I have to, I didn't want to. And you saw that, right? That I <laughs> got to run, I got to stay there for six months. I didn't want to, I only want to be 90 days because I don't need to be there six months, but that's okay. But it was my business that no one really knew that I had except within the inner workings of my business because it was an offset of my company. Six, most of six figure business are offset of my company. Mm. I didn't need to market it. When, when you're positioning yourself online, you do want to be known for something. It's okay to be known for something else. Cause I do the international retreats. I have a travel business, but I don't, you know, it's not what I mainly promote. I, I'm known for something. So I didn't want to be known for the book publishing company. <laughs> right. So I kept it silent and kept it all referral. So I was going to close it last year. I had already planned on closing it last year and I made the announcement and I started just telling my, my clients and everyone even coming on. And so one of my clients, one of my clients was like, they wanted to buy the business. Mm. I was like, oh, okay. Well, well, they kept asking me all these questions. And so the questions I was like, well, you know what? Let me see if she would be interested in buying the business. So I ended up working a deal, negotiating a deal to actually sell my very first business. And what's so funny is one of my mentors a long time ago said, you're not really doing business unless you're setting up your business to be sold. Mm. So I thought about that when I initially went in. I said, how can I make this business a residual income company? So maybe later on down the line, somebody will buy it. But when I decided to close it so I can focus on my brand management, actually, I was going to focus more on my speaking career, my speaking mm -hmm. career, which I'm putting on the back burner again, which is fine. I was just going to close it. But Opportunity presented itself. Opportunity presented itself and you were ready. When you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. You don't have to and you talked a little bit about that, like process and identifying it. You know, I don't, you didn't share the numbers, but identifying having and the I numbers. And I can't and I won't. And I can't and I won't. Yeah. <laughs> so we won't do that today. But just the, the, the idea, I think again, you, you are somebody who plants seeds, whether you realize it or not, a new seed, like, oh, we need to start selling businesses or we need to position and, our businesses and buying. That's been a theme buying, today. That's some style of money. You, there's, so, we working hard on the internet. I'm telling y'all. Too hard. You guys, I'm telling you guys. And this, this is what I always say. This is what, what my push planner. I'm like, it's easier to sell instead of me trying to sell 30,000 or 3,000. Let's just mm -hmm. use a low number. 3,000 push planners online to 3,000 people. That's a lot of work. It is. I could just partner with one company who has 3,000 people. And sell it to That's them. easy work. That's mm. easy work. And make the same amount of money and don't nobody know about it. That's that silent money. We got to work smarter. That really, the light bulb really went off. I think Alex Hermosi talked about like cold email and cold outreach. Like there's, he was like, you can be doing stuff in the marketplace and your competitors have no idea. And I said, wait a minute. It finally is like, okay, this is making sense. You can move beautifully, profitably, wealthily. We just making up words wealthily. today. I like wealthily. That. I like that. <laughs> and nobody else knows it but you. And I said, I need some of that. Yeah. Going back into that, that silent money. And one of the things that you do that I love and I see the photos and I always want to go, but the timing, you know, we be busy ladies. Uh, your revenue rooms where you focus on the money and revenue and it's, and you're unapologetic about having these higher level skill sets to get to the goals. And I don't, and I never hear you like flaunting about money or saying, I got this, I got that. You're just smooth with it. It's just her. I do sometimes. I do sometimes. <laughs> you, you will hear stuff here and there. You know, she wants the fancy well, plates for the holiday dinners. Yeah, but a little bougie, right? I'm she wants the fancy stuff for the dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just how you move is different. Like, we, we're in this society and I know you see it because we, we, like, people are very flashy. They got to show what kind of car they got. They got to show this. They, they got to show what kind of jewelry and, and, like, and that's the lifestyle marketing. Right, that is very lifestyle marketing. That's the bulk of the marketing we see on the internet. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, there's so many people that are ultra wealthy. Very wealthy. They walk into a room right now, you don't even know, unless you really know what ultra wealth looks like, that they have money. And that's a cultural thing, too, when you begin to travel more mm -hmm. in different countries and just be in different rooms and have different conversations. A good place I always tell women to go to, even if you don't smoke cigars, go to cigar. You know, that's my thing. Mm. Cigar lounges, cigar bars. Those are the best places to meet diverse 
you know, multicultural business men and mm. and women. You will learn so much, and they make a lot of silent money. You have, you won't, you can kind of tell by the watch. You can, you, mm-hmm. you see little thing, the shoes. You see little things that you can tell, but not really. So it's a cultural thing with us. We wanna, we wanna, we think a Lambo means success, but a Lambo to me means debt. Oh, so we mm. have to be careful. We got to be careful. What are, okay, what are three things that women entrepreneurs need to focus on as we go into this new year? What are some things, whether it's around silent money, Mm -hmm. around negotiation, what are some things that we really need to pay attention to? Pay attention to. Mm. There's so many. (laughs) Your circle. I think mm. it's number one. Uh, we hear it all the time, right, Shade? Your net, your network is your network. Is your network. network well, your network equals your net worth, and there's not a truer statement. Like for real, for real, it, there's not a truer. So I think that we need to women entrepreneurs need to be a lot more intentional about the rooms that they're being in. Mm. And when you're in those rooms, who are you there specifically to me? And I talk about this again in my book, Become a High Value Brand. I give you specific step by steps on how to start a conversation, how to network with the big with the big dogs is what I call them, engaging those relationships. And it's not to use them. It's to see what value you can add mm. to them. So that's another thing that we have to do as well. Looking, moving into this year and beyond, because I don't get caught up in the years this year and beyond is how can you add value to other people? Because believe me, it always comes back. The relationships that I have with a lot of people is because I added value. I brought them business. That's a, that's a good thing. Mm, you bring somebody mm. some money, you are a friend for life. You are a friend for life. So those are two things. The other thing I think is hmm, putting your head down. This is where I am right now. Mm. Putting your head, like I just took a trip nobody even knew, right? Putting your head down and getting focused. Like really, for real, for real, putting the blinders on mm. and just getting focused. It's okay to, to step away for 90 days, for nine months if you have to. So you can really get focused because that focus will really, it just, it, I don't know, just opens up so many different windows of opportunity because you're focused and you can see things. When you're not focused, too many distractions mm. in your way and you can't see what's really meant for you. So those are the main three things I can think of off the top of my head. I love this around, get, you know, getting around the right communities and checking the people you're around and getting focused and putting your head down because the reality is I know, we know a lot of people that make this look easy, but there's work. There's work that needs to happen. Uh, what is next for you? Mm, I don't know what's next for me. I think really the speaker agency, that's what I'm focusing mm. on right now. Because I really want to, you know, I love Rich Paul. That's um, LeBron's um, mm-hmm. agent. And so I'm already coining it, you know, the Rich Paul of speaker agencies because mm-hmm. that's where it's going to be. So that's new, that's what's new for me because I'm so focused on it. Once I get focused, it's just going to do its thing. And I, and I no longer have my hands on the book publishing company. So I have the room and the space to do that now. So that's what's new for me. I'm still going to continue my trips to Africa, my masterminds and my conferences in, in, the, uh, in Africa. And that's really it. Everything else is pretty much staying the same because it's working right now. I don't really need to shift right now. <laughs> mm. It's working. It's like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And that's another thing. Sometimes mm. it's shiny things. I'm like, oh, I can make money. Oh, I want to. Uh-uh. It's, it's working for me right now. It's good. I'm happy. Yeah. I love it. So there's, I mean, there's just so many parallels. I was thinking about it last night. I was like, oh my goodness, she does this. And I want to do that. I'm doing that. Or like, it's there's, all connected. It's all, co- there's connections. And, and, and it just, it's a reminder. You're one of these people, you don't be like, oh, she's trying to be like me. You're like, there's room for all of us. Absolutely. There's room. If you can be a speaker. You can be a speaker. You can Even travel. You can travel. Or have the same. You can talk about branding. You can yeah, like. None of us are doing the same thing. In the same we're way. In the, exactly. We're in the same. We are in the same movement to empower mm. people to change their lives, right? Empower minds, change lives. We're in the same movement. So we can still be in the same room, even help the same people. You know, like, like we can do it. There's there's so much room. There's just, just, just <sighs> figure out your lane and stay there. Stay in your lane. Okay. Dominate your lane and just just make strategic connections and I think practice the art of intentionality. Yeah. This has been an amazing conversation. How can we stay connected to you? You talked about your book. How can we get the book? Just go to my website, are we squires? We're gonna make sure in the show notes below this video that we have a link so that you can stay connected. What's one last thing you want to leave our audience with today? <sighs> Do you stay you and be you, period. <laughs>
do you, <laughs> stay you, and be you, period. I'm going to bring it back. You know, I'm, you know, I got license. I got a couple of more minutes. <laughs> One thing I want to bring back, because you're, you're successful, and I think it's important, the, the women that we serve, and even me as a single Black woman, mm -hmm. And longevity and love and relationships. Mm -hmm. And you talk about your family and your husband yes. and your children. How do you balance the things that you do? Because you're a titan. So how do you, and I know there's people who are watching this that need to hear your answer. Yeah. So how do you balance love relationships and business I and family? Mm. My family first. My husband comes first, then the kids. <laughs> My husband, then the kids. I just put it all first. It's the most mm. important thing to me. I, I'm very strict with my time, meaning you're not going to come in just because you, you can during mm. that time. If it's family time, if it's I'm very strict with it. Um, and then I have a very loving, supportive, literally my, my, my husband is like my, my, you know, that that just that everything for me, that rock that I need to keep to keep me grounded, to keep me sturdy, you know, that foundation. So I think that's important, but there's really no balance. Really. One of my clients always said that you got to blend things. Mm. Yeah. You mm. gotta blend things. And that's how I do. I just blend it. Like my son was supposed to be here tonight. We were actually on the way here. Mm. 16 and he has a job now. We were on our way and his job called him to say if he can come in. I had to turn around, you know, <laughs> but I, but when I say blend, I was going to bring him so he could sit and watch and learn and be a part of the hard work, the dedication, you know what I'm saying? And see all of that. And that's important. Our kids have to see it. You know, they have to see the success. They have to, they see have to celebrate with you and they have to see the, the challenges and the obstacles as well. So I include, we, we, we're just a big family. We just include each other in everything. I love that. I love this. The power of blend. So, I want you to look in your camera and introduce yourself and tell us why your brand's a big deal. Oh, goodness. Hello. My name is Ari Squires and my brand is a big deal because I really just want to see people win. And I like to stay in my lane. I like to go against the grain. I like to look at what everybody else is doing and do something different. And I really believe that that's why my brand is a big deal and it helps me keep my brand value high. And you can do the same thing. Ladies and few special gents who are watching. <laughs> thank you so much for being here for another episode of Girl, Your Brand's a Big Deal. Ari Squires, thank you so much for being here. Ari